This video is split into three parts. An introduction to Marcus Aurelius. Suggested reading for Marcus Aurelius. Three stoic exercises that you can apply today. Marcus Aurelius was born almost 2,000 years ago. He lived in the years 121 to 180 AD. He was born in a prominent and established family, but no one predicted he would be the Roman Emperor. There is little known about his childhood, but we know he was a serious young man who enjoyed hunting, boxing, and wrestling. Around his teenage years, the Emperor Hadrian was nearing death, and he was childless. He had to pick a successor, and after his first choice, Lucius Sionius, died unexpectedly, he chose Antonius. Antonius was a senator, and was also childless, so went on to adopt Marcus Aurelius. When Hadrian died, it was clear Marcus was next in line for the most important person in the emperor, the most powerful man at the time. His education would become a serious concern, and he'd be educated by Herodus Atticus, a rhetorician from Athens, as well as Marcus Cornelius Fronto, his instructor in Latin whose letters of correspondence with Marcus survive to this day. Marcus would also serve as a consul twice, valuable and practical education. In the year 161, as Antonius died and ended one of the longest reigns of the Roman Empire, Marcus became emperor and ruled for nearly two decades until his death in 180 AD. At the beginning, he adopted Lucius Verus to co-lead with him. He died eight years later. Marcus's reign was not easy. Wars with the Perithian Empire, the barbarian tribes menacing on the northern border, the rise of Christianity, as well as the plague that left numerous dead. Marcus's death came in the year 180 in his military headquarters in modern-day Vienna. These words were used to describe Marcus's relationship towards his son. Marcus was not strong in body and was involved in a multitude of troubles during his reign, but for my part, I adore him all the more for this very reason, that amid unusual and extraordinary difficulty, he both survived himself and preserved the empire. Just one thing prevented him from being completely happy, but after rearing and educating his son in the best possible way, his son disappointed him. It's important to realise the magnitude of power that Marcus possessed. He held the most powerful position in the world at the time. If he chose to, nothing was off limits. He could indulge and succumb to any temptation. There was nobody that could restrain him from any of his wishes. Marcus is one of the few people with such great power that truly deserved it and proved himself worthy of the position. So much so that Marcus was even stated the last of the five good emperors. Wisdom and virtue is what separates Marcus from most world leaders. For Marcus, Stoicism provided a framework for dealing with the stresses of daily life as a leader. In the last decade of his life, he wrote letters to himself, aimed at his soul. He called it To Himself, later renamed meditations. He wrote this whilst on the battlefront campaigning against foreign invaders. Passed down from his mentors and teachers, Marcus embraced the idea of Stoicism. What's tragic about Marcus is how his philosophy, which is about self-restraint, duty and respect for others, was abandoned so quickly by the imperial line he anointed on his death. Now it's up to us to pick it back up. Suggested readings. Marcus only has one piece of work preserved today called Meditations. Not only is it one of my favourite books, but it's been labelled one of the greatest in the world, and is the only book of its kind. It talks about self-discipline, personal ethics, humility, self actualization and strength. Even the fact that these pieces of writing have been preserved for such a long time is an honour to us. Or you can listen to it for free as an audiobook. The link in the description is to that as well. Three stoic exercises that Marcus Aurelius suggested. The first... Practice the virtues that you can show. Marcus advises us to practice the virtues that we can show, such as honesty, gravity, endurance, austerity, resignation, abstinence, patience, sincerity, moderation, seriousness, high-mindedness. Don't you see how much you have to offer? Beyond excuses like, I can't, and yet you still settle for less. The second exercise is to draw strength from others. When you need encouragement, think of the qualities that people around you have. This one's honesty, another person's is generosity, another person's is modesty, and so on. Nothing is as encouraging when virtues are embodied in people around us, when we're practically showered with them. It's good to keep this in mind. The third one is, focus on the present. Don't let your imagination be crushed by life as a whole. Don't try to picture everything bad that could possibly happen. Stick with the situation at hand and ask, why is this so unbearable? Why can't I endure it? You'll be embarrassed to answer. Then remind yourself that the past and future have no power over you, only the present. And even that can be minimised. Just mark off its limits. And if your mind tries to claim that it can't hold out against that, well then, heap shame upon it. 